My name is Katherine Meeks, and today I will be talking about three sculptors, Willie Cole, David Match, and Eva Hesse. This presentation is to explore and compare these artists who all use or use repetition, but in three different ways using completely different materials. The first artist we'll be looking at is Willie Cole. Willie Cole was born in 1955 and is now 62 years old. He is from New Jersey, but studied art at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Since 1988, Cole has been working with found object sculpture by embracing America's throwaway culture. He is known for using ordinary objects like bicycles, irons, and shoes to make iconic artworks. A lot of his works allude to the African-American experience inspired by West African religion. His work and biography can be found at his website, willycole.com. The first two works by Cole that we're going to look at are Soul Brother No. 1 and Zebra Town Mask. When I first saw these masks, I was shocked. Assembled from only high-heeled shoes, these masks are animated and energetic. There is so much in just one of these assemblages that I can I can keep looking back and finding another shoe that I hadn't seen before. In Soul Brother No. 1, I most connect with the shape of the mouth because the character actually looks grumpy. I am amazed at how Willie Cole is able to convey emotion through different angles of shoes. The sculpture has depth and shadow, which helps the face look uniform rather than a bunch of objects on the same plane. I chose to compare these two masks because there is a big time difference, 2007 to 2015, and I think that it shows his improvement over the years. Soul Brother No. 1 has rich emotion and is very effective, but when it is compared to his later work, Zebra Town Mask, I can see that Cole became more precise with the placement of shoes as he continued in these studies. These are just two examples of at least 22 high heel masks Cole has created. The second sculpture we're going to look at is The Warrior from 2011. When I first saw this, I thought that it was high heel shoes as well. However, this is actually a bronze sculpture with an applied white patina. Patina is the film that bronze acquires over time, usually a blue-green color, but different colors can be acquired by applying a variety of chemicals to the metal. Cole did an amazing job of working the material to make it look like soft folds and creases. There is even stitching around the different pieces of each shoe. He made this sculpture during the time of making his his mask, which may have inspired him to create a full body form rather than just a face. I am drawn to the anxious emotion I get from this figure's eyes and mouth. Even the figure's cheeks are puffy as he rests his face in his hands, obviously worried about something. Cole made multiple sculptures out of old bicycle parts that directly reference the antelope headdresses called chihuahuas, which were used in agricultural rites by the Bambara of Mali. Each work has a title that combines the type of bike with the West African inspiration. This sculpture is my favorite of Willie Cole's work and is actually why I chose him as an artist. It is simple yet effective. I appreciate the fact that I can see both the bike and the animal in this sculpture. Cole didn't abandon all elements of the bike but embraced them instead. I thought that this was a giraffe but I'm happy to learn that it is an antelope and it has cultural reference. The most effective part of this piece, to me, is the tire acting as a mane. Between the two rims are small wires which connect them visually, but also bring negative space into action. Here is a photo of the Chihuahua headdresses being worn. The Chihuahua represents a mythical being who taught men how to farm. Chi means work and wara means animal, so together these headdresses mean working animal. The next artist we'll look at is David Match. David Match is also still working. He was born in 1956 and is 61 years old. He is Scottish, but currently works in London. Match attended the Duncan of Jordanstone College of Art in Scotland, where he concentrated on sculpture. He has had experience as a part-time lecturer and professor at schools in London and Japan. His artistic style is based on assemblages of mass-produced objects, including coat hangers, matches, and magazines. More information and works can be found at his website, davidmatch.com. Match is known for doing installations with flowing mass-produced materials. This installation, Bangers and Mash, is the perfect example with thousands of magazines sculpted into a large flowing form. It looks as if the flowing sea of magazines could swallow you, like it has taken over these old yellow cars. I'm interested in how Match got these magazines to be so fluid. Did he glue or did he just stack them in such a way that they support each other? There are no sharp, sharp edges, which makes it hard to believe that this was made of magazines. When asked about this sculpture, Match stated, Everybody at this time was making permanent works, sculpture that was a solid form, welded together. I wanted to make something that would certainly appear solid, but that couldn't be lifted up and carried away like an object. This sculpture was made in 2002, and David Match hasn't done an installation like it since. However, he just announced in April that he is live streaming a new installation he is making out of 20 tons of newspaper. For more information, 
on the process of that sculpture, you can visit the link on the screen. This sculpture was created for an exhibition marking the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. The exhibition was made up of over 70 collages and six sculptures taken from the most epic events in the Bible. Even though David Match grew up in the land of the King James Bible, he considers himself unreligious. He created these pieces because he is so intrigued by the high emotion of the Bible. This is why his crucifixion scene is actually a portrait of Bruce Willis and is titled Die Harder, a play on words mimicking one of Willis's movies, Die Hard. The sculpture is 20 feet high and made of wire coat hangers. This sculpture has created mixed emotions. Some churches, such as the Southwark Cathedral in London, have embraced it, while others have dismissed it as not biblical. I have a mixed reaction as well. I chose this piece because I am so impressed with how the hangers were manipulated to show muscles, emotion, and especially wrinkles in the face and wrists, but I'm having a hard time seeing it as a devotional image. After knowing Match's intentions with this piece, it's hard for me to see the sculpture as anything more than a great talent or hard work. This next piece is made of thousands of matches. I was drawn to the sculpture immediately because I have actually done a matchstick piece in the past. David Match was able to create not only depth and life-like curves in the sculpture, but even human emotion. His subject, David, is furrowing his brow and looks confident yet cu curious. David Match doesn't provide much detail as to how this piece was created, so it's up to our imagination. I think the most effective decision about this piece was choosing to make it all one color, especially orange. Viewers don't have to take in thousands of dots in varying colors. They can focus on the form instead. However, this orange is the perfect value for a monochromatic sculpture because it allows viewers to see changes in shadows and details as opposed to being a bright yellow, white, or black sculpture. Our last artist is Eva Hesse. Eva Hesse was born to a Jewish family in Germany just before World War II. When her relatives began being sent to concentration camps, her father took their immediate family to America to flee the rise of Nazism. At just 16 years old, 17 magazines showcased Hesse's work, and later she went to study painting at Yale. Hesse became involved in sculpture after being inspired by watching the movements of dance, and some of her materials include latex, plastics, rope, string, wire, rubber, and fiberglass. The artist took a trip back to Germany in 1966 and returned to America more drawn to surrealism and minimalism. Her struggles with political persecution, depression, and eventual suffering from cancer all had effect on some of her artwork. In a journal entry, Hessa claimed this piece was really good because it's the most ridiculous thing she's ever made. She considered this piece to be her first significant work of art for its absurd and extreme feeling. It shows a play on the relationship between 2D, a frame traditionally used to border two-dimensional work, and 3D, the cord protruding into space. To me, this represents Hesse's variety of work. She was a trained painter, but a famous sculptor, making her a very versatile artist. The title of this piece, Hang Up, is a play on words, as it refers to both installing a painting and to the psychological preoccupation of being hung up on something. Metronomic Irregularity Number 2 was first exhibited in the show Eccentric Abstraction. The art story describes this piece by saying, The push and pull between these different sources of inspiration and such starkly contrasting textures create a dissonance that gives metronomic irregularity a unique intensity, evoking at once the beat of a clock and the disarray of an all-enveloping windstorm. I think that this is an accurate description here we see an ordered system of three large squares connected by the chaos of hundreds of strands of wire. The two elements contradict each other. When this exhibition was reviewed by the New York Times, the article was full of comments about the men's work, but almost nothing on Hesse. She was fighting for equal support of women in the art world. However, she didn't want to be called a female artist, just an artist. This is Hesse standing in front of metronomic irregularity number two. You can see the detail of the grid behind her, as well as where each wire connects to the slate. Another sculpture by Hesse was Accession Number 2. To create this piece, Hesse and her studio assistant, Doug Johns, drilled 29,000 holes into a box made of thick fiberglass. Then they pushed small plastic tubes through the holes. This meticulous and repetitive process turned into a cave of plastic tubes that the audience could interact with. Although it looks like it could be sharp or rigid, this piece is made of plastic tubes that invite the viewer to put their head into the sculpture. If they do, they cannot hear anything, as it cancels out all outside noise. This last photo shows Hesse with accession number two. I have included this photo as a size reference. 
That concludes my presentation on works by Willie Cole, David Match, and Eva Hesse. Thank you for watching, and here is a list of my sources.